So Blind is here, Anthony Benton, Brad is here, Egyptian Goddess, Bucket Black, Malik, Queen, Sheet, Mohammed. Egyptian Goddess, you're welcome, Egyptian Goddess. Uh, you know, social media is King Joshua. Social media, for me, in the next couple months is horrible. I got to watch so much fake. Uh, it's just really hard for me to adapt to black people committing suicide and homicide and genocide and then turning around and trying to talk some black positivity. I mean, black people just basically shorten the lifespan of their own relatives, you know? It's the strangest thing in the world. I'm looking at people post pictures of their sick family members. I mean, the family members are not. The doctors haven't said they're sick, but you can look at them. They're sick. I'm watching women post their husbands. Their husbands are sick. Their husbands are like 40, 50 years old. You can see he's swole. You can see he's puffy. You can see that it's cold and it's full of shit. You can see it. I mean, you know? You know, you're actually looking at people that's on their way to the hospital. Some sooner than later. It's very difficult to watch. For black people, we like to talk about building and uniting and building. But we don't, we, we, we really, that's something that you would have to do now. You would have to work on now. But we're not really into working on anything now positive. We're in the plan and having fun. So for the black people around this planet, you only live for today. So how could you build any type of black infrastructure when you only live for today? You know? You only like to live for today. That's really crazy. Egyptian guys, they say that good food is expensive. You know how much money black people spent for Thanksgiving? You know how much, you know how many, much vegetables they could have bought with that money? They lying. A turkey is not cheap. Steak is not cheap. Hamburger is not cheap. They lying. Meat is not cheap. Okay? They lying. They are lying. They don't never say that when they go buy Jordans or buy Christian Dior. And buy. They never say those clothes they buy are cheap. Yeah, isn't that a shame, Empress Tiny OG? We was more healthier as slaves than we are now. She hit the nail on the head. My new adapted cousin. Y'all say hi to my new cousin. Empress Tiny OG, she knows my cousin, so, you know, she's been knowing him for a long time, so now I'd adopted Empress Tiny OG as my cousin. <laughs> That's how we do it in Chicago. That's how we do it in the suburbs. So that's my new cousin. She's just as cute as a button. Hey, uh, Aruf. You know, if you're if you didn't eat all the way plant based this past weekend, that's fine. As long as you did better, if you did a little better, then congratulations to you. You know what I mean? Because it's a process. Uh, soul food, veg, soul food, vegan, 
down there in Texas. Y'all make sure y'all can support the brother. Brother, we're going to do our live this uh, week. I got thrown off because when they got time to do the live, they had banned me over here for a while. So I never did really get back functioning like I'm supposed to. But we'll do our live this week for sure. Y'all go support the brother. You know, he's a young brother. He's feeding black people really good food. You got to support that. Anytime you're around his area, make sure you follow him. Soul Food Vegan. Vegan. Make sure you follow Soul Food Vegan. Follow him. Buy his book. Okay? And support him. Keep the uh, uh, restaurant, right? The address to his restaurant. Anytime you're in that area at all, go support the brother, right? Anything he's selling, order it, okay? So if he has anything he's mailing out, order it, okay? The young brother trying to uh, look out for the health of his people, you know? It's a real good thing what he's doing. You know, I've been eating that soul vegetarian uh, here in Chicago since the 80s, 1980, something like that. And they've been here in Chicago doing the same thing, helping black people lose weight, helping black people convert into a better way of eating. And so that's always something uh, good. This is a business you all should be looking to get into black women. If you can cook, you should look into that. Yeah, you send me so much stuff, bro. I do got a call. You keep sending me a number. I do got a call. You can, I got to find out what all this stuff is you sent me. I haven't even used it all yet. You know, I use the uh, the bladder rack. And I think another one. But the other packages you sent me, I still got them in the refrigerator. I'm like, this brother's advanced. I don't even know what this stuff is. I've been a vegan 43. I've been a vegan 43 years. What the hell did he just send me? And so I love to see the young people be advanced. That's right. Take it further than us, okay? Take it further than us. Okay? Take it to the next level. That's what we want. We don't want you following. We don't want you following us to the point where you're behind us. We only want you to follow us until you get a certain amount of knowledge. And then when you get a certain amount of knowledge, we want you to surpass us. But it's really hard for me to watch uh, it's just really hard for me now to watch black people talk positivity more than they've been talking to eat right. You know, I, I, I just I just don't like it. When I see brothers talking history and they're talking history real heavy and everything they say is 100% history, but they're not talking about how to eat right, I don't like that. Because the history, our history, is ain't shit compared to our future. I, I'm gonna hate to tell you. You know, I'm becoming a person that don't like history that much because history has become a hindrance to us. You know, we leaning on history. Oh, history, history. Okay, it's cool. All right, fine. But there should be some limits on history. Maybe we need to have our own schools. You know, if we take over the schools in our community, we can fix that. Okay, boom. You in sixth grade, from sixth grade to senior, we teach you history. And God damn it, once you get out of senior, no more goddamn history. Okay, we told you this way, you came from enough of that. God damn, history forever? You got people studying history that go back further than how they're going to live. You know what I'm saying? So vegan, so food vegan. Think about this. Think about a black person that's 40 years old eating meat. They studying history that go back 200 years, 300 years, so many hundred years. But then they only going to live 10 years. So they studying a long way back this way, but ain't making no plans this way. So now you know history, but you die early. You die so early, you can't even pass the history down to your grandchildren, right? You can't even pass the history down because you're dead. 
So now the grandchildren are like, well, who's my granddaddy? Oh, your granddaddy died when you was one. Your granddaddy died. Yeah, they use history to try to say, we ate meat and Kemet, and Kemet fell. <clears throat> okay, we ate meat and Kemet, okay. All right, I'm a vegan. We ate tofu in 79. But I don't eat that shit now. <laughs> The fuck? So just because I ate tofu in '79, tofu is cool. No, we 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 uh, elevate, <clears throat> and so it's hard on me because you know, once you once you become aware of what's really going on with black people, and like once you really realize how fast we're dying. And nobody's really pumping that. Like, once you realize how fast we're dying from cancer and how fast we're dying from diabetes and stroke and heart attacks and heart failure and heart disease and all of these and, and, and artery disease, once you, like, really see that, once you realize... When you say, well, black people die from cancer, but once you break it down and say, damn, breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, like once you realize how many black men got prostate cancer and are dying from it, and how many black women got breast cancer, and that four out of five black women are overweight, then once you really come into that awareness, right, and you know that, it, it messes your mind up. You know, it's almost like you can see the future. So now when people post, when you post your Thanksgiving pictures with the family and I look at the family, I'm looking at all these sick people in your family. I'm looking at your aunties and your mother and them totally messed up. And I'm like, these people can't see that these people don't need to be eating that. And it's almost like you're blind. <clears throat> it's almost like you really don't understand that auntie shouldn't be eating this. It's like you really haven't asked auntie, auntie, what is the doctor saying? So I'm watching people that's feeding people stuff that know they're in the doctor's orders to not really eat that. You know, I don't go to the doctor because I don't get sick. So I never go to the doctor because I don't ever get sick. I don't get headaches no more. I don't get, you know, how you walk down the stairs. You know how you get all that boogers and all that. I don't get that anymore, okay? But I was a victim of a crime. I got stabbed. So I had to go to the doctor for medical treatment for that. So being in the doctor's office to see my doctor, to check out my wounds, to take my stitches out and shit like that, I was able to observe black people that's in there for medical reasons. And I remember one time at the doctor, the doctor comes out the back with an older black man. And he tells the older black man, he says, uh, so listen, man, I want you to cut back on that, on that, um, on all that cheese, man, and all that salad dressing and stuff. And he's like, but doctor, you know, I got to have some salad. He was arguing with the doctor. The doctor said, well, go find some that doesn't have so many calories and stuff like that. Listen, Mr. So-and-so, you're going to have a stroke. You're going to have another stroke. You can't eat that stuff no more. You can't eat all them eggs and stuff no more. That's too much cholesterol. And the man was like, yeah, but doctor, but, 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 but. I just was looking at it like the man was already addicted like a drug addict. So now once our people is addicted to this stuff like a drug addict and they haven't worked to wean themselves off of it, right? So now you, let's say you're 100% healthy and this is sick, but you're 100% healthy. So you start weaning yourself off of this negative food. So you're fine. But if you don't start weaning yourself off this food and let's say you get sick, and now you're sick. And now you absolutely can't eat none of it. But you're addicted to it, like me. I used to be addicted to it. And so imagine being, now 
you find out you got stage one or stage two diabetes, you find out you got to eat, stop eating this stuff, but you're addicted to it. So now every day that is taking you to wean off of it, you're killing yourself. You're about to have lower extremity amputations or dialysis because you can't get off of it. You're like an alcoholic that never tried to stop drinking, and now if he drinks a hundred more drinks, he's going to die. But he's an alcoholic. So he drank, boom, 20 drinks, 30 drinks, 40 drinks. He tried to slow it down. But even when he slowed it down, it's still 50, 60, 100. Boom, he's dead. And then a lot of the brothers, man, you know, I don't be liking a lot of these brothers on this social media. I ain't going to lie. A lot of these brothers on this social media, I don't really got a lot of respect for them because I be watching you. And I be watching your concern for the community. And when I see the community, a holiday's coming up that's going to be bad for us physically, but I see you keep talking history. Yeah, the Native Americans was here and we killed them and all that. But then you ain't really talking to black people. Don't y'all eat all that shit? I ain't really respecting you as no as nobody helping the, the, the people. The, uh, people. I don't respect. I feel. I look at you as a fraud. You know, it's like, bro, how you helping the people? You know, like our people are sick right now. Like right now. Not no long time, right after Thanksgiving, they were sick starting that night. Starting that night, a lot of our relatives don't feel good. A lot of our relatives is going to the hospital all from now, all next week, all the next two weeks, a lot of our relatives are going to the hospital. You know, one time I went to a family function and it was my ex-wife's relatives. And everybody was there doing their thing and whatever. And when that Monday came, it was on the weekend on that Monday, I wanted her to call her uncle because he had some type of liquor. And I wanted to remember what it was because I wanted to get something to put it in my bar to have it, right? And so when she calls him on like a Monday or a Tuesday, he says he wasn't feeling good. And that's what... You know, my antennas is up because I eat right. And that moment touched me because she said, oh, you don't feel good? And then I said, but damn, he was just over there eating all that shit, drinking all that liquor. So I was like, wow. So from that point on, I got more sensitive to it because I realized that that hanging out with the family made him sick for real. Right? It made him sick. And this was about three or four years ago. He's dead. He just died a few couple months ago. He's dead. An older relative drank too much, ate too much garbage. And instead of him being healthy in his old age, he was out of there. By the time he got really sick, he died real quick right behind. And so from that point on, I started thinking, well, damn, I never thought about that. Like, do we call our relatives after Thanksgiving and Christmas and say, hey, Granny, how you feel? I think you'll be surprised. I think if you call all those people that you fed all that mac and cheese and, and turkey to, especially the older ones, they probably don't feel good. Because people be make gluttons out of their soul and try to see how much stuff they can eat and forget about the fact whether it's good for them or not. They just try to stuff their stomachs. So I got to watch the black woman stuff her stomachs and then start wrapping all these waistbands on her stomach. You know, trying to make a shortcut. You know, and those waistbands, that's going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Those things ain't no good for you. You... You got five feet of, of colon, and you full of shit, and then you're going to squeeze all that shit in there. 
and all your organs together like that to make your waist look small. And I don't know why the doctors don't come out and tell women, you know, you can't wrap your stomach tight like that. You can't wrap your organs like that. Tighten that thing like that. That's going to kill you. It ain't like the shit is out of there. So you done wrapped all that shit in organs and squudged it all together like that? You got to be kidding me. Crazy. Like almost like crazy people. So let me get this straight. You eat to get fat, then you don't want to be fat. You know, I started the Body Sculpture Challenge. It's going to be the same. We're going to do it again this year. We got one more month to go, December. But it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be all these black people that's full of shit. A lot of them going to start the Body Sculpture Challenge because they know they done ate all this shit. They're going to do it for about a month, maybe two months, and they're going to quit. They're going to quit. Health is like nothing. So I'll be out here beating the road, man, on social media. Health, health. I talk about other things, too. But the only reason I talk about health so much is because I'm out here by myself. You know, shout out to Red Peel. Red Peel hit, was hitting home with that. I got to give the brother's respect I was doing that. Shout out to Red Peel, the Minister of Wellness. And there is some brothers and sisters you know, living vegan, that sister, the other brother that the work out and shit, I forgot his name. So there are some brothers and sisters doing it, but overall, the majority of my timeline, it's just crazy. It's like fake black pride and fake black positivity. And so now tomorrow, I got to watch black people go from suicide and genocide to some fake black shit. Talking about Kyle Rittenhouse and talking about all type of shit. Fake black stuff like trying to fake some type of energy. Trying to fake some type of positive energy and trying to get a positive energy off of a social media post. So it could be the simplest way to be positive. Because the simplest way to be positive is just get on here and post a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? So now you so down, you know. You, oh, woo, you know. Yeah, we was Nubians in 14,000 B.C. Yeah, now you so down. Any motherfucker can do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? History is the worst fucking class. Seriously. Like, I'm not sending my kids to school t to be no historian. I want them to go into medical, banking, technology. I don't want, I don't want my kids to be no history teacher. That don't pay no money. History sucks. <laughs> history mystery. I know a lot of history. I ain't gonna tell no lie. I know a lot of history. And history is like going to church. It just make you feel good. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, yeah, we was Nubians, yes. That's all they do. And you get like a euphoria off of knowing this shit. But practically, it don't do nothing for you. It don't do nothing for you. It's just like, okay, you know the history, but you turn around, you're eating dead animals. Okay, how you doing better? How you doing better? Because history is like this. History is only valuable depending on what history you're talking about. So let's look at history. Let's look at history of black people and diabetes. quiet on that. You're not doing the history of black people in diabetes. You're not doing the history of black people in strokes. You're not doing the black the history of black people in heart attacks, the black man in heart attack, the black history in healthcare. You know, you don't do that history. 
You do the history. Well, you ain't got to change. All this stuff about history going to make you change. It's not going to make you change. Okay, you find out you you find out about Kemet. Or you find out you're a Native American. Okay. Well, you want a fucking cookie? Okay, now what? what what's going to change because you know that? My grandma's, my great grandma's a suit. What can I do with that? Fact, I mean, just in real, in real time. My grandmother's a suit. Her husband was an African slave. What can I actually do with that history? Nothing. I would do better concentrating on the LLC or getting a motherfucking corporation or something I could pass down to my kid. I can't pass that down to my kids. My great grandmother passed the fact she was a suit to my grandfather. My grandfather passed the fact he was a suit to my mother. My mother passed the fact that we was sue to me. And what has it benefited the family? Nothing. Okay, we fucking sues, okay? And what can I tangibly do with that? Nothing. It's just some information I know. As a matter of fact, it becomes a bit of information that can cause division between other native people. It does more damage than it does any good. Because rather than talking about how you're going to eat, you arguing over if you're African or you're a Native American. Like, what the fuck difference does it make? You're still a fat ass. You're a fat ass African American, uh, African descended, or you're a fat ass fucking Native American. You're, 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 you're a descendant of slaves with colon cancer, <laughs> or you're a Native American with fucking colon cancer. I mean... The Native American, a lot of the Native Americans in America are stone cold drug addicts and alcoholics. Alcoholism is is rampant on the reses. I would advise black people to go to the res. I mean, it's things I did in the eighties. Go to the reservations and get that out your system. Go on and see for yourself. Go to the res and see how they live in. They ain't living like shit. Go to the res. Go to a sweat. I mean, you'll enjoy the sweat, the rocks and the hot water in the, you know, you enjoy to see the big teepees and stuff. If you go up to Spokane, Washington and stuff, I've been to all of that. Arizona, all that, go kick it with the Native, you know, they like rosters, so we play reggae, you know, around the Native Americans, a lot of them. But, it ain't really, it, 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 what is that? If you, if you just look at the situation though, the situation is this. We need economical development, right? Well, how could you get economical development while you're creating crazy medical expenses? See, nobody want to talk about that. You see what I'm saying? Claude Anderson ain't talking about that. Boyce Watkins ain't talking about that. Okay, so you build an infrastructure and black people, you start bringing in $30 billion a year in business. But then you got $40 billion a year in medical expenses. Ain't that 10, ain't you $10 billion down? It's a fact that a lot of older black people are taking out reverse mortgages on their home to pay their medical expenses. It's a fact that your medical insurance at your company will not cover cancer. It just covers a large portion of it. It does not cover the bill. This is a fact. I don't care how much money you make if you get cancer and you got to get radiation and chemo, that shit will wipe your money out. You'll be broke. Because you won't be able to go to work, so that money will stop. Then you got to start using them. You got to start using your insurance money that runs out. I'm telling you. Ask somebody how much six pills when people on radiation and chemo. Ask them how much eight pills cost. You'll see. 
You're paying hundreds of dollars and you get eight pills. That's a fact. So ain't no economics. You see what I'm saying? When we say health is wealth, don't nobody even really understand what that means. If health is wealth, then sickness is poverty, ain't it? I mean, you can't have it both ways. If health is wealth, sickness is poverty. So if black people is number one in cancer, prostate cancer, number one in breast cancer, number one in diabetes, number one in colon cancer, Number one in stroke. Number one in artery disease. What advancement? There is nothing that none of these people is talking about on this social media that's more important than our health. Nothing. All that other shit is nonsense. It's garbage. It's only valuable after you're taking care of your health. If you're not pushing health first, all that shit you're talking to is straight nonsense. And let me tell you something. Some of these people that live, live in the 70s and shit, so what? They've been sick 30 years. I tell this all the time. My father was dying. I was there taking care of him. My mother had already died from cancer of the, older, of the uterus and her ovaries, right? So my mother had already died. My father was kind of down and out. His wife that he'd been with for 60 years is dead, right? He died from this cancer to be in your veins. He died from this cancer to be in his veins, 41 years old, shout out to Virgil. Virgil was here in Chicago. He was born in Rockford. He was the one that sewed a lot of our clothes, like my boy got a clothesline, and Virgil and MD and these brothers from Africa, these brothers from uh, West Africa, they used to do the sewing. So you design the jacket, you take it to Virgil, you take it to MD downtown or to wherever they little place was, and they would sew your product for you and charge you for sewing it. Then you would put your price on it and sell it. You know what I'm saying? So we know Virgil, rest in peace to Virgil, but he died at 41 years old from cancer in the arteries. It's from eating meat and cheese and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers is dying earlier and earlier. That's just what it is. And so when you look at the situation, we number one in all these deaths. We got all these diseases and shit. How could you build economical wealth if you're dying early? The key to economical wealth and stuff is to be here to teach your children and your grandchildren and to keep making money for a long period of time to stack as much bread as possible and to not have to spend a lot of money out. But you don't never see nobody give up the medical expenses of black people. They're not putting that on social media. There's no, there's no data on how much black people spending on medical expenses. You got a lot of Pan-Africans over here talking about going to Africa, and they don't even know Africa don't have their meds. Africa don't have your meds. Africa don't have your meds. You got to go talk to Africans. <clears throat> you don't have to go to Africa. All you got to do is talk to Africans right here. I was at the DMV, and a sister behind me, she was an African sister. I was there to renew my license. And her family was from like Ghana and Nigeria, something like that, Nigeria and Senegal. Her, her, her parents were from two different West African countries. So I asked her, I said, you know, a lot of black people talking about going to Africa. What kind of advice you got for us going to Africa? And she told me straight up, she said, well, if you want to go to Africa, make sure you get your meds to last for how long you're going to be there. So if you're going to be there four months, you got to get four months of meds. If you're going to be there three months, you got to be three months of meds. She said, I can't go home and stay because my meds run out. They don't have my meds in Nigeria. 
They don't have my meds in Ghana. They don't have my meds in Senegal. So I always have to come back home to America. None of these Pan-Africans tell you that. You cannot get, if you're sick, you cannot go to Africa. Africa doesn't have good health care. Duh. And Africa is dealing with a pandemic and an epidemic too. And so some people are arguing if you're Native American or African, well, they both sick. The Native Americans are sick as hell. Okay? They're alcoholics, they're drug addicts, cirrhosis of the liver, diabetes. And the Africans are sick. Diabetes, high blood pressure, cancers rampant over Africa. They saying that cancer in Africa is going to be out of hand in another 15 years. They ain't going to be able to even stop it. They don't have enough medical facilities for all the cancer they got in Africa. Africans in the backwoods and little villages got cancer. Now you tell me something. How is an African that's totally away from 5G, totally away from all type of chemicals and shit, how does an African in Africa in the back small village, why do so many of them got cancer? Because they're eating up fucking dead animals. And they ain't got no industrial farming. So they eating all kind of bush meat. In America, you got the same white man that you claim you want to liberate from. That's who provide you with turkeys. That's who got up his Dr. Frankenstein turkey farms, his Dr. Frankenstein cow farms, his Dr. Frankenstein chicken farms where he's got thousands and thousands of them piled on top of each other, shitting on themselves and shooting them up with hormones and swelling them up. Shooting them turkeys up so they'd be big. They shoot the chickens up, the chicken breasts get so big, the chickens can't even walk. And then you give your daughter that shit and then you wonder why, your, why these young girls' ass so big and why they titties so big. Because you eating them growth hormones and them growth hormones give you cancer. Duh. So I see black people talking about you ain't gonna take the jab but you eat animals that took, each animal you eat took what, 10 to 15 jabs, 30 jabs, 40 jabs? Depending on how long they live, they gotta get these shots every so often. Anybody got that raised dogs know that. If you got your dog, as soon as you get the puppy, first thing you got to do is go get him checked for worms and he got to get his shots. And if they find out he got worms, you got to take him back so he can get his shots for his worms. You got to take his wormer medicine. Doctors, dogs have to take shots. And you don't even eat dogs. So imagine how many shots chickens get, how many shots pigs get, how many shots cows get. Right? We'll just take chicken, pigs, and cows. If if chickens get 14 shots and cows get 10 shots and pigs get 10 shots, that's 34 shots. So if you ate some bacon, some chicken, and some beef, how many shots is that? And then when you go to the store or you go to church's chicken and you get some beef, I mean, you get some chicken, when you order a five piece, those five pieces ain't from the same chicken. So you eating five different chickens and each one of them had 10 shots. On top of the fact it's grease, it's greasy, it's fat, it's the wrong type of fat. So now you, you got cholesterol problems. Everybody's veins this weekend, black people's veins closed up more. See, your veins is open like that so the blood can pump too. Black, black people's veins is like this because of Thanksgiving. And you actually killing your own relatives. You actually invite your mother and your loved ones to the house to kill them. Straight murder. And then the way we live in, on one hand, we talking about black people got to do better in the future. But on the other hand, we talking about just live for the day. 
And so this is our problem economically and, and medically. We always on that live for today shit until we get evicted. Then we get evicted or then we get the lights turned off and then when you get the car repo, now all of a sudden you down and out. But you was playing, you know, you don't get serious until the doctor tell you got cancer. Now you want to get on this internet, you know, my mama got cancer, man. Prayers for my mama. You know what I'm saying? Dude, You done seen my videos telling you you was killing your mama and you kept killing her. Now you want prayers for her? Black people, you're so busy teaching history that you ain't teaching that the brother that played Black Panther died at 40. In his 40s, Virgil just died in his 40s. Black people dropping left and right. Look at Scarface. He looked like a skeleton. Look at Dr. Dre from Dr. Dre and Ed Lovell. Foot, one leg cut off, the other foot black. Look at Freeway, dialysis. Scarface, dialysis. Benny Siegel, dialysis. What, what do you need? Look at Master P. He did all that running at the beginning of the year. Look how swole up he is. Look at 50 Cent, how puffy he is. He's doing all type of shit to stay in shape to look like muscles. But you can see those brothers swelling up. You can see the effects of the meat. And all of a sudden, they're going to fight it and fight it, but it's going to hit them at like 50, and then they're going to age like that if they live that long. They're not going to age gracefully like that. You're going to hit a wall and boom, you're going to be out of there. And people are saying, let people eat what they want to eat. It's like, come on. What do you mean let people eat what they want to eat? Even if it's going to kill them? So you believe your father and your, your, your husband... Should be able to eat what he want to eat, even if your husband going to get prostate cancer? Because eggs definitely going to give him prostate cancer and dairy products. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. This is science. Look it up. Men that eat two or three eggs a week are pretty much guaranteed to get prostate cancer. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. Well, what do you think you're going to get when you stealing the creature's eggs and eating their babies. When you eating chicken abortions. I mean, you're on some witchcraft anyway. With all these bones and skin and shit on your plate. There is nothing positive about it. None of that shit's a joke. All of that shit could attack any of us. Because if you're not eating right, then that means you don't check your cookware. So you got all these Teflon dishes that got forever chemicals in it. So you're not really checking. See, getting off meat is just the beginning. Then you're going to get off dairy, artificial flavors, artificial color, and preservatives. Then you're going to say, oh, this deodorant got aluminum in it. This toothpaste got fluoride in it. it, it go, it's bigger than meat. It turns into making sure you put the best things in your body. So when you say health is wealth, right? Once black people get into health, then black people are going to notice there's certain products missing in the community. So then black people are going to get into those businesses. And the fact that black people become health conscious, they're going to get wealthy from it. Because it's opened up a whole new market for us. If we start pushing plant-based food and natural food in the community, how many black women can be millionaires by opening restaurants in the community that provide this for our people? How much money is there to be catering for help people cater for Thanksgiving so they can have good food? How much money is it going to be in cooking lessons and cooking classes so older black women and black men can come to cooking classes to learn how to cook the food so they can learn how to make their sweet potatoes? Without all of that, you don't need what you're putting in the sweet potatoes to have sweet potatoes. 
You can make sweet potatoes naturally, and the sweet potatoes naturally taste better than the other ones. That's a fact. All that stuff could be made naturally, and it tastes better. That is a fact, if you know how to cook. Some people don't know how to cook, so then when you taste their vegan food, you say you don't like vegan food. No, it's not that you don't like vegan food. They just couldn't cook it. I can give you one person's vegan mac and cheese, you're going to be like, no. I can give you another person's vegan mac and cheese, you'll be like, this tastes like mac the same stuff I've been eating. It all depends on who cook it. So you got to learn how to make it taste the way you're going to like it. But nothing is more valuable than your health. Any of us could be in a car accident and all of that. But we got to stop teaching that there's a date for us to die. That's the worst philosophy ever. My boy, he don't take care of himself, and he always saying, when that time comes to die, you're going to go. But then he always run into the doctor. So I'm looking at him like, well, if you got a predestined day to die, why the fuck are you going to the doctor? According to you, you ain't going to die till that day comes. So why are you going to the doctor, bro? You hypo- you're a hypocrite. You're going to the doctor to ex- extend your life, but you just said you can't extend your life. You said whenever that day comes, you out of here. Okay, whenever that day comes, you out of here, why are you going to chemo? Why are you going to radiation? Why are you taking insulin? Like, explain that to me. Explain to me how you got a date to die and you're going to die on that date. Well, explain to me why you keep running to the fucking doctor. If you're not going to die no matter what until July uh, uh, 2045, then you shouldn't have to go to the doctor. If you got a pre if you got a predestined day to die, why the fuck is you going to the doctor? It's a legitimate question. According to you, you can't die. You don't need to go to the doctor. According to you, if you ain't gonna die until July 30th, 30, 30, 2045, then can't nothing kill you, right? That's bullshit. <laughs> That's nonsense. Straight nonsense. When that man call you upstairs, listen, man. That's all that man do is call you upstairs. That man don't tell you to stop eating all that shit you eating. If your God call you to heaven, but your God don't never tell you to stop eating all this shit to kill you. Your God is a dumbass. <laughs> I don't want to fuck with your God. Your God is a whole bitch. What kind of fucking God you got? Like, that motherfucker's worthless. Because God, that you call God, is going to send messengers to you. People like me. Nigga, this is God telling you this, stupid. Because who inspiring me to tell you? Who give me the strength to get up every day to tell you to eat right? That's God, dumbass. Duh. Okay, let's look at it. If you got God and the devil, the God is righteousness and the devil's supposed to be evil. So if you got two friends, and one friend telling you, come on, man, let's shoot up some heroin. And the other friend is telling you, no, man, you shouldn't do heroin. Which one represent a God-like concept and which one represent a devil concept? And so if you're eating shit at Thanksgiving that is bad for your health, that's the devil because there's no positivity in that. Duh. If you're drinking 100% natural fruit juice, that's godly. If you're drinking a wine punch with red dye in it, they're going to give you cancer. That got to be the devil. Because God don't give you cancer. Duh. God don't give you prostate cancer. God don't give you breast cancer. God don't give you kidney failure. 
Liquor give you kidney failure. And liquor don't represent God if you're abusing it. And so you're eating devil's food. Basically. That's what you're basically doing. So you're going to eat a whole bunch of hams and shit, and when I tell you, you know, it's not righteous, you're going to say, Jesus ain't fish. Hey, ain't no fish on your plate. I just see beef and pork and turkey. So you're a fraud, you know? Why you ain't just eating vegetables and fish then, fake-ass nigga? Show me what Jesus fed on pork or Popeye's. Don't be eating no chicken and tell me Jesus ate fish. That's, you sound stupid. If you only ate fish and you told me Jesus ate fish, I go, well, at least you got a point. But nigga, you can't never eat Polish sausages and shit and tell me Jesus ate fish. Show me where Jesus ate fucking white castles, bro. Show, <laughs> show me where Jesus gave the people McDonald's, Burger King, turkeys, hams. Show me where Christ fed them mac and cheese. Show me where he gave them cheese. Show me where Christ gave them cow's milk. Show it to me. Show me where Christ got on his knees and sucked a cow's titty. Show me that. Show me where Christ sucked a cow's titty or took a cow and squeezed a cow titty and put the cow titty in a bottle and told the disciples, take drink the blood of Christ from a cow. The fact is that when you go to church and you take communion, it's wheat and grapes. Ain't no meat at communion when you ask for your sins at church. Ain't no meat, ain't no meat at communion. That when Christ said take eat and take drink, it was wheat wafers and grapes. Was no meat. That's the holy, that's the holiest part. That's why you do communion. You have communion because that's supposed to be the holiest thing you do in the church. This is a fact. It's communion. And there's no meat in communion. There's no cheese in communion. There's no dairy. There's no pork. There's no beef. For you Christians. That the holiest thing you do to be forgiven for your sins in church is communion. And that's vegan. Communion is vegan. Prove me wrong. Communion is vegan. At that time, the Romans and Philistines and them was eating raw bull and drinking bull blood. So you have to understand the history to understand the scriptures. And so when Christ said, this is my body and this is my blood with the bread and the wine, what he was saying is, I'm not fucking with their body and their blood. They worship an opus. They worshiping Taurus. They eating bull meat and drinking bull blood, but we not doing that. These grapes and this bread is my body and is my blood. So take, eat the body of Christ. Take, drink the body of Christ. So the body of Christ is grapes. The blood of Christ is grapes. The body of Christ is bread. But the body that they was eating up Apis the bull and Mithrius was real flesh and blood. So communion was to mock that, to show them not to do what the heathens would do, to not eat all that raw meat and all that meat off of them savage animals and drink that blood from them animals, but to eat the wheat and the grapes. When Christ was arrested, he was under an olive tree. He wasn't at Popeye's. 
<laughs> he wasn't at Popeye's. He was under the holy sacred olive trees. I'm just telling you. And so now all tomorrow, I got to look at all this fake positive shit with all these brothers, especially I, the sisters, uh, you get a pass, but the brothers. I got to watch all these brothers type all this positive shit and they never took no time, all this time to tell black people to eat better. If you're a black man and you've been on here talking all this blackly black shit and you didn't take no time last week to tell black people to eat better, you bogus as hell. It's so foul that Thanksgiving is doing National Diabetes Month, and y'all can't even see what's really going on. It's National Diabetes Month, and it's World Vegan Month. Some deep shit. And National Diabetes Month starting November the 1st, right before two months of people becoming diabetic. It's so deep that you just got to really look at it. And I kept posting it, but I don't think nobody was getting what I was saying. I posted, I don't know how many diabetes videos. If I post somebody falling down some stairs or doing something stupid, I get like 2,000 likes. But I post like diabetes awareness, cancer awareness, I don't get nothing but like 100 likes. It's real shit. Not that I care, but I use it for a reflection on how the people is. The people, they, they're like, uh, they like the, They like the other stuff. They like the stuff where they ain't got to do no self-improvement. I be seeing that. But as soon as some other type of stuff, somebody trial, some black man trial, and that white man, that black man, here they come. Hey, man, they ain't going to never mind. Uh, uh. That shit be phony as hell. Miss me with all that black shit. And you sit up there, you always talking about white people doing this shit to you, and the number one killer of black people is black people. You're the number one with murder with black people. You're the number one with suicide with black people. You're the number one with genocide with the food. If you die, if black people is dying number one from cancer, number one from diabetes, number one from prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, diabetes, artery disease, stroke, heart failure, if black people is number one in all them things, that means that black people is number one in things that where they're killing themselves. So all them sicknesses that we're number one too. We are number one in all those seven to eight diseases. We number one, which means we're committing suicide. So we're killing ourselves. Then we on the streets with violence killing ourselves. Then we having the most abortions. So where you got time to talk about white people when you just tried to kill your relatives, you just tried to murder your relatives for Thanksgiving, you just fed your relatives biological weapons to kill them. You just fed them shit to speed up their death. How you gonna come back next tomorrow to start talking all this white supremacy shit when you us basically promoting genocide and suicide and homicide. A lot of brothers talk about homicide in the black community, but they don't talk about the suicide and genocide with the food. The homicide is number seven in the black community. Duh. Homicide is number seven. All that other shit is number one. Yes, yeah, stroke and all that is way higher. More people down to diabetes and stroke than gun killing. 
By the time Chicago ends in homicide, we probably going to have like 850 homicides. But you ain't going to be able to see the statistics on how many people in Chicago, black people die from diabetes. That's going to be like 3,000. Stroke, going to be like thousands. Heart disease, going to be like thousands. Prostate cancer, going to be thousands. They ain't going to show you them statistics. How many black people in Chicago, how many black men in Chicago in 2021 are going to be the die from prostate cancer? They are not going to show you those statistics. They got them but they're not going to show you. And when I go and I look up how we dying, it'd be crazy, Nelson. It'd be like this, Nelson. I'd be one, I'd be getting ready to plan to do one of my uh, live streams on YouTube. So I go look up, because I want to talk about it, so I'll look up prostate cancer. And then, Nelson, it'll be like, prostate cancer is killing a lot of men in America but it's killing African-American men the most, and they have a more deadly form. They're less likely to get it, but more likely to die. Then I look up breast cancer and say, a lot of women got breast cancer, but African-American women got it the most. They're less likely to get it, but more likely to die. They have a worse form of breast cancer. I look up colon cancer. Americans got colon cancer a lot, but African Americans got it the most. I look up heart, I look up stroke. A lot of Americans got stroke, but African Americans got it the most. And all of these white doctors and all of these medical people are writing on Google that you all dying the most, but it don't make no headlines. You got to search it. So all of this white medical industry in America know you dying the most, but they will not make it a big story. You'll never turn on the news where they'll break all that down and say, hey, African-Americans, y'all, they don't say nothing, but they know it. So I found that suspicious that the medical industry know this, but we don't know. All the way down. So then I went to Africa, same thing. Jamaica, same thing. Diabetes and shit everywhere. Cancer everywhere. Trinidad. The Virgin Islands. Brazil. Blacks in Europe. Same shit. Nobody say nothing. So now, some shootings happen in Philadelphia or L.A. or Dallas or Chicago. A black man going to get on here next week. We got to stop killing each other. Wait a minute. Hold on. Bro, what do you mean we got to stop killing each other? Does that include diabetes? Does that include cancer? Because, bro, last week you didn't give a fuck. You went and you ate that shit, and you was like, fuck that shit. You didn't even believe it was going to kill you. So now don't get on here with this fake shit like you give a fuck about how black people die when you ain't did the research on what's killing us. I'm trying to figure out black man... How you keep talking about the black man dying and the black woman dying without looking up the research on what's killing us? But you know all the research on history. I got to get out here by myself and the Minister of Wellness and a few of us, we got to get out here by ourselves and tell y'all the, 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 the statistics while the rest of these niggas is talking about stop killing ourselves while these niggas eating some shit committing motherfucking genocide. Here's a nigga eating chicken and turkey and fish and shit saying black people got to stop killing themselves while he committing suicide. Bro, you committing suicide right now. Bro, tell me you're not eating no Popeye's chicken saying black people got to stop killing themselves. Bro, are you kidding me? Bro, tell me you're not eating no turkey and ham and a bunch of mac and cheese and, and, and all this dairy Tell me you're not saying that black people got to stop killing each other. Why are you killing yourself? And why whoever cooked that killing your whole family? You're actually inviting your family to the house to kill them. And that's why we got to get our own media. Because if we had our own media, then we can go do the research. We can do research like how do black people feel 
the first week after Thanksgiving? What's the statistics? What's the number of hospital visits? We're going to have to do that ourselves. America not going to tell us that black folks dying this week. How many heart attacks going to happen this week? How many strokes going to happen this week? How many people going to go into diabetic coma this week? The news media not going to tell us how many black people is in the hospital right now from Thanksgiving. You can believe that. And it's so bad, we don't even ask our people how they feel. You're like, man, it's good to be around family. Bro, why you don't ask these people how they feel? Hey, auntie, how you been feeling? And really make her tell you, because she'd be like, well, I've been all right. But she ain't been all right. She probably don't feel good then. Then they go back home, do a live stream. Yeah, I wasn't feeling that good, but I went on. I had a good time with the family. You're right. You wasn't even feeling that good, and you still want to ate all that shit. And why don't you get on this live stream and tell them now you feel worse? So black people, when we get on social media, every time we look up, another black person dying. Rest in peace, rest in peace, rest in peace, rest in peace. And we always in shock. Damn, we didn't even know they was fucked up like that. We ain't going to know. Because we talking about everything is self-help. And ain't nothing more important than help. Motherfucker gonna tell me about history. Nigga, how could you know your history if you did? You know what I'm saying? Don't talk no stupid shit to me, bro. You can't study history if you dead, nigga. How many motherfuckers want to study history on dialysis machine? So you want to be on dialysis machine reading about Comet? Reading about ancient America? On dialysis? Who, if you want to do that, give me a thumbs up. If you want to, if you want to learn a bunch of history on dialysis, with congestive heart failure, why are you in the hospital with a stroke? Cali Muscle been in the hospital twice, two heart attacks. He out of here. It's just a matter of time. He know he can't eat all that shit. He was eating clowns on that motherfucking YouTube, eating all that garbage, eating all them Popeyes, eating all that shit, taking all them steroids and all that shit he eating. I think muscles going to save him. Muscles ain't got nothing to do with your organs, man. Muscles ain't got nothing to do with your organs. Your organs control your body. Your muscles just control your movement. You got to take care of your arteries, bro. You can't clog up your arteries with that shit. Well, we got all these overweight black people out here, all these overweight black men and black people out here, all chunky like that. I think you can buy some nice shoes and some nice pants and get out here and hide the fact you ain't taking care of your body. So you all looking a mess. You got on these nice clothes. You got on your jewelry. You know, what the hell's going on here? Bro, take care of your real body that you're putting the clothes on. The clothes is more valuable than your real stomach. What? That shirt you got on is, you like that shirt more than your real stomach. That's crazy. Like, we didn't almost turn to crazy people. And because we're in a different time zone, and we've been eating worse and worse all the way from when we came from the South, black folks finna be dropping like flies. Man, black people finna be dropping like boom, 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 boom. All your homeboys, all your chunky homeboys, you'll see. The phone gonna be ringing. I just called you Carl Marvin died last night. What happened? I don't, we don't know he died in his sleep. Or he parked the car and he felt it, he died behind the wheel of the car in the driveway. All of that. The number's going to go up because you've been doing it a long time. You've been doing it for generations now. So now you're weak. See, every time I get these black people to say, hey, my, my mama ate meat, right? Which means you're going to die quicker. My grandmother lived to 117, but down south, they didn't eat a lot of meat like that because they couldn't afford it. They ate a lot of greens and black-eyed peas and cornbread and string beans and shit. My father didn't eat no eight-piece chicken and no orange soda. 
down south, they drink water. The main liquid down south in the 60s was water. When I was a kid coming up, the most popular thing to see black people with is an old jar and some food came in with some ice in it and water. Ice water was number one. Kool-Aid was number two. Everybody had ice water in the refrigerator. Ice water was it. All we did was drink ice water and drink water off the hose while the hose outside. We drank a lot of water. We ain't drink no sodas and shit like that. That didn't start happening until the 70s. In the 80s, we started drinking all that soda and shit. In the 60s, we drank water. You couldn't even give people a soda. you like, you want something to drink? They tell you, yeah, give me some water. They say, I got some sodas in there. No, give me some water. Black people used to choose water over a soda, over juice, anything. Water. Don't nobody even have water in the refrigerator no more with ice in. You know what I mean? They go, they go get the water and then put the ice cubes out the freezer in it. But see, back in the day, they put the ice in that shit and put it in the refrigerator. It'd be ice water. I bet you they're going to find out that do some kind of osmosis and shit. Later they're going to find out, you know what? When you put the ice in the water and put it in the refrigerator, it'll do something. So it tastes better. Guaranteed. I bet you right now that if I take some a, 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 a jug of water and put some ice in it and put it in the refrigerator for some hours and take it out and I get a glass of that and I get another glass where I put some water in it and put some ice cubes in it, I guarantee you the water in the refrigerator that had the ice in it probably tastes way better than the water that I made and put the ice in later. As old black people was doing science, they probably didn't even know they was doing. And we all had fruit bowls. Yeah, they used to do that. Probably they used to put the ice, they put the water in the refrigerator with ice in it. And I bet you, Posse, that that ice sitting in that refrigerator, I bet the ice got a way of purifying itself and changing the osmosis and adding more oxygen into that water. Guarantee that they was naturally doing it the way you're supposed to do it. And that water used to be good, too. Think about how good that water was, that ice water in the refrigerator. Think about that. Now, everybody had fruit bowls. You know, my mother would call me and my sister downstairs and say, go in there and get me two carrots out of there. And my mother would get the carrots out of there and scrape the little parts off of it and rinse it good and cut the end off and get me and my sister carrots. My mother used to get me and my sister carrots all the time. Used to get me and my sister's let, uh, celery. We used to walk around eat celery. We used to walk around and eat carrots. My mother would go to the store and she'd get... They get 40 tangerines. They go to the store, they get like 30 plums, 20 plums. They don't get no 10. And we just, me and my sister, we just be eating plums like we never had them before. You know how you go and you buy a bunch of bananas? Back in the day, they would buy two of them. It was always a nutcracker on the table. It was always pecans, walnuts, and shit in there. They always had peanuts that you got to haul yourself. They was really into natural food. They wasn't into all this artificial shit like that. And they definitely didn't eat a lot of meat. Black people didn't start eating a lot of meat till like 1976, 75, 76. Black people didn't eat meat like that. Black people didn't eat a lot of meat like that. Your mama only ain't cooking a whole bunch of chickens. They didn't go like that. In the day, growing up in the 60s, it was clear what was the most powerful food. Your mama made it clear. Your mama always made it clear what was the food that was going to make you healthy. Right off the top, your mama tell you, eat your vegetables. That used to be a, a, a battle cry. You could not get up from the table. You could not eat your chicken up or your meatloaf. 
When your mama put your plate there and you start eating the meatloaf, you take one piece, you eat it. Cool. You eat another piece. Your mama butt right in. Eat your vegetable. Put that meat down. Put that meat down. You try to get full off that meat. Eat your vegetables. This is a fact. Any black person will tell you that. Your mama would not let you eat the meat first. No. Eat your vegetables. They knew that if you ate that meat and got full and didn't eat them vegetables, you was not going to be healthy. That This is real black history. There's no house in America where you didn't have to eat your vegetables. Yeah, if you ain't eat your vegetables, you ain't going outside. You can't, you gotta eat that, you gotta eat that. That's the dinner. The meat is like a snack with the dinner. The meat wasn't never in the black family for you to get full. I mean, for you to get nutrition. It was just to make sure you get a little extra full. But the basis of, of the meal in the black community was always the vegetables. It was always in the black community. It was always cabbage and the shit was king. They didn't eat broccoli and cauliflower and shit like that. They ate cabbage. They ate corn on the cob. Black eyed peas. String beans, lima beans, collard greens, turnip greens, mustard greens. This was off the top what you're going to eat. And the old school people, they had these big pots that your mama had put on the stove. And that biggest pot on the stove was always full of corn on the cob. Because they knew the kids liked that corn. That corn was sweet. And one thing about us, we eat that corn on the cob. You know what I'm saying? And so the way your mom and them made sure you was healthy, there'd be a big pot, and there would be a lot of corn on the cob in there. Either they'll break it in half, or sometimes they put the whole ones in there. And like us, it was a family of four. And it would easily be 12 corn on the cobs in that pot. Because I would go to two or three of those. I loved corn on the cob. It was really good back then. It wasn't this GMO corn. That was that real corn that when you eat it and juice is popping out. It was sweet. It was so good. And that was in the days your mother get the string beans and make you sit there and pop them with her. And when you used to pop the tips off string beans, they used to go crack. And those string beans were so good, I can't find string beans like that no more. Somebody told me I got to go down south. I can't find, I can't even barely find whole string beans. When I find them, they all soft. They don't pop when you pop them. And when you taste them, you can, it, the nutrition is not there. You can taste, there's less nutrition in it. I can only imagine how nasty the meat is. I haven't ate meat since the 70s, 80s. But I guarantee you, if I ate a piece of meat, it's probably horrible. Y'all probably eating straight trash. That meat y'all eating, boy, that shit probably nasty as hell. Because all them cookies and shit they made back then, they all shit nasty. Y'all Oreo cookies, that shit, what is that? Y'all Hustle's Fruit Pies and all y'all stuff that existed. Y'all Cracker Jacks and all that, that shit nasty as hell. That ain't no Cracker Jacks. I don't know what they giving y'all. They giving y'all a jack of cracks. 